AWS presents Blueprint of Banking Innovation in association with CNBCTV18.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Blueprint of Banking Innovation, a part of our series on leading in the digital era. The show is a presentation by AWS in association with CNBCTV18.com. I am Lata Venkatesh. In this insightful session, we dive into how banking leaders are leveraging technology to stay resilient and agile in today's digital first landscape. According to Deloitte's survey on digital banking maturity, Indian banks have outpaced the global average in digital maturity. So how are Indian banks thinking about strategies for future-proofing businesses, harnessing the power of AI and cloud for stability? How are they looking at enhancing technology resilience with advanced cybersecurity? And how are they prioritizing customer experience? For all these questions, we are joined by a visionary leader in digital banking, in fact, in the banking industry, Mr. B. Vaidyanathan, CEO of IDFC First Bank. Mr. Vaidyanathan, thank you very much for joining us. The choice of IDFC First Bank and Vaidyanathan is deliberate because we consider you a digital first bank, a digital native, so to speak. But before I come to that, for the wider audience, how are bankers thinking about technology? What are the key areas first? Uh, very simple. See, the, the experience uh, customers are having outside of banking is dramatically changed, whether Facebook or Instagram, everything. You see how the experience layers are, how the hyper-personalization is, how easily you can click screens, all that. So the banking system is a regulated industry. Uh, there are a lot of responsibilities. There's also a growing industry and Indian economy is you know, sort of sprinting. So on one hand, we're seeing big opportunities to grow. Other hand, we are seeing technology changing, and when you put the two together, you can expand, uh, you know, the landscape dramatically, and also improve customer experiences in a very meaningful way. All right. So both macro and micro in terms of customer satisfaction. Let me come to your specific uh, experience. Uh, you, of course, had some experience in legacy banking in your previous avatar and ICICI Bank, but when you came to IDFC First Bank you're kind of digital native, you didn't have a legacy. So tell us, how did you think you could compete with the giants who had already arrived? Lata, on this, you will re definitely remember your conversation with me. We had, a, we had exactly a talk like this. And uh, the key concern of a bank at that point of time was that, guys, you guys have a 1 lakh crore loan book after merger. You don't have retail deposits, only 10,000 crores. So you're going to take a long time just to measure up to what you already have. So how are you going to grow? That was a concern. So the if we had taken to build the bank, so that 10,000 crore deposits, you have to hold your breath, Lata, is today retail deposits of 10,000 crores at merger in just six years, we're not even celebrated a sixth birth anniversary yet, is already 1,80,000 crore. Ooh, that is what, 15x. And growing at 30%. Now, it is not logical. So just like you remember how the geo moment happened, and suddenly they know the whole ecosystem changed and they got millions of customers. Like that, we wrote a digital landscape. And we, we clearly thought that if we had to build the bank the traditional way, like many of the banks have built, it would probably take 30 years, to, 20 years or 15 years to build this. We didn't have so much time. So we let like, think of it that digital was the bit of a magic carpet to cover up a lot of distance. A lot of time. A lot of time. Okay, so let me take product by product. Deposits. I mean, you have bank branches so that you can attract deposits. How did you all scale on deposits? That's the most difficult product. I know that is the hardest question thing and you know even more difficult than lending money because in deposit people have to leave money with you. Yes. <laughs> You're not, right? Yes. So, it, so we, we, uh, uh, what we did was that, um, uh, you know, by the way, just to tell you that for the kind of deposits we have, we have only thousand branches, only thousand branches, not even touch thousand branches today. How is it possible? <laughs> So it's not about the branch, that's the point. It's not about the branch. People are hardly coming to the branch anymore. Yes. So we have developed our capabilities, our mobile app capabilities in such a way that not just do normal transaction, which is like, you know, seeing a balance and all the, that's pretty routine. We have stacked up five or six solutions on top of it, which has made it very sticky for the customer. And once the customer gets used to the full stack of services, then they don't go. So that's one very big thing. So those stack of services could be that, you know, investment options, your loan options, uh, you know, your mutual fund options, your wealth management options, retirement planning solutions, financial planning, customer service, 
uh, payments. So if you stack up so many services, it just makes it more sticky. Now, how do you let people know that you have all this? Uh, is there a way you digitally uh, capture uh, customers? I mean, of course, we know that you have very good advertising as well. But uh, is there, uh, you know, technology or AI used even in that sphere? Frankly, general advertising is useless. Okay, you might see that you know front page newspaper advertisements. We hardly put them. You know, once in a while, turn out, but we don't put it because they're useless. People forget it the next day. So uh, uh, the, the digital kind of advertising, which reaches the right segment, for example, we pick a segment of yours and we have something called look alike. So we do a test, you know, rapid testing, A-B testing of that. And depending on that, we reach out to many people of that profile and the marketing dollars are used much more effectively. And rest, it goes by word of mouth, by the way, just to tell you that we have, if I'm not mistaken, something like about 14, 15 million downloads already. 15 million downloads in five years. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine because a, a, a satisfied customer is perhaps the best advertisement uh, that a bank or any institution can have. Now, you know, the uh, as you said, deposit is, is an important part. The other point where you touch the customer is when you're recovering money. How do you use technology over there? In a big way. Uh, uh, you know, again, uh, see, literally, Lata, first of all, everything has changed in five years. Okay, like five years has changed everything like in India. So not long ago, because when we started Capital First, as you know, we were you have been meeting me for a long time. We were very used to giving these small ticket loans at 20%, 28%. And I would have thought that is labor intensive. The labor because intensive. Because you have to go and ask for the money. Yes. So before I come to collections, I'll tell you how that loan is given in the first place. It, it's very interesting for you. So when we started in uh, Capital First in 2010, uh, at that point of time, our cost of funds was 11, 12%, 13%. So we couldn't compete with banks. So we started lending to these small entrepreneurs, Kirana shops, etc. at maybe 20 odd percent. So those days, not very long ago, like 10, 15 years from 12 years, 14 years before today, for giving 20,000 loans, we had 200 underwriters. Okay. Every underwriter was doing 100 loans a month. Today, of that same business, we're doing 3.5 lakh loans a month. And guess how many underwriters we should have today? Some X of 200, you should say. We call it 1000 or 2000, whatever. Zero. Same 200? Zero. Okay. Even those 200 don't exist anymore. All right. All right. So okay. every one of those loans are now given algorithmically. So that is the power of how this whole technology is playing. Okay. You have not experienced, I mean, obviously, I we look at your quarterly and it's not showing any increase in bad loans uh, to the extent that it should. <coughs> These algos work so well. I'll tell you how the algo works. It's a very important question. So, how the algo works is that when the customer is applying for a loan, first check the identity. Now, you go and hit the Aadhaar and then you get the identity from there. You go to NSDL and then you get the uh, you know details from there and then you match the two. All this done instantly, algorithmically. Then after that, you go and then you have to do some fraud uh, and uh, income checks. For that, you go to the Bureau and the Bureau doesn't do income, but gives a proxy for income. Then from there, we go and do some fraud checks. In fraud checks, for example, if somebody is a 45 years old, PAN card is say one year old, right? Uh -huh. We say, man, something missing. What are you doing? It's not finding a tax return for what, for 40 years or what, or 30 years. So we say that, we say, okay, now something is fraud. Somebody, somebody lives in say, Kandivali, coming to die, buy a TV, television, say in uh, say Nariman Point. The system algorithmically finds out the customer is going somewhere else to buy a TV, while they could have bought the same TV next to their home. Mm -hmm. So all these algorithms are working on the fly better than what human beings can do. That's the point. Naturally. Better than what human beings can do. So you said delinquency sh shouldn't go up by algorithm. It gets better because human beings cannot do that. Yeah, you cannot look at thousand uh, better points. Lastly, not last, but a couple of more things. So now we discussed identity with income. We talked of fraud. Then there are employee frauds. Algorithmically, you can find it out. Then the dealer frauds. Algorithmically, you can find it out. A customer initiated frauds. If you fiddle with your phone too much, right? Those you can find out then which normal human beings can't find out. Then for um, uh, documentation, you can do and hit one API and do e-sign, e, e e-agreement, e-mandate. So whatever is done by human being is done by the machine more efficiently, more accurately, low cost, and that 200 employees down to zero. Well, you know, when the word cloud came to Indian banking, I remember a lot of bankers were not very comfortable because they were used to housing their technology in-house. Now it is, you know, outside. 
how do you negotiate these problems? And does the cloud offer you other advantages? And therefore, you are willing to migrate data. See, cloud is a very powerful technology and has made a huge difference to us. And uh, uh, we are using cloud extensively. I would say, if I were to put a number, probably 40% of our banks in the cloud, which is migrated from, say, maybe, maybe 4 5%, maybe 5 6 years ago. So what we have done is that there are some things that we have not moved to the cloud. Like your core applications are cloud ready, like your core banking system and your credit card system and your, these are cloud ready, but moving them to the cloud will be like lifting and shifting a existing platform. They don't add much value. Uh, and, and regulatory reporting will not move to the cloud. So some things are on prem. But our entire customer engagement layer has moved to the cloud. Our entire mobile app, I told you about like 14, 15 million downloads, by the way, Lata, it is a Google rating, the operating of 4.8, 4.9. 4.8, 4.9. That's, That's really something. So, and, and the App Store rating 4.8 again. So, so, so that customer experience comes from the cloud. So our mobile has moved to the cloud. Our internet banking has moved to the cloud. Our number of internal enterprise services have moved to the cloud. Our d mechanism has moved to the cloud. Our, uh, uh, so a lot of these services all moved to the cloud. And we have found that by moving all the technologies, all these services to the cloud and customer facing engagement layers to the cloud, the customer experience dramatically shoots up. So we are big believers in the cloud and we, we, we think that all of the products made cloud native makes a big difference. You, you don't have any security issues? No, no, on the contrary, Lata. Cloud enhances security. The tools are better. There are other issues of the cloud, which we'll talk about if we have time for that, which is also important to consider, but the, the the scalability, the power, the ability to use the security, actually better. But tell us more. I mean, are there any issues or do you think more will migrate to the cloud? See, like we discussed before, the cloud, if somebody just lifts and puts their application on the cloud, they are not much, much, much use. It's of use only when you use the tools that come along with it. And, and there are a bunch of long list of tools that come with it, which, are, which, are, which, which helps you personalize, etc. There are many powerful benefits. But the issue is also there. The other day we were doing cost-cutting measures at our bank. And we figured out that uh, our people had gone and consumed a certain, reserved a certain amount of parking space out there. And the bank was not using that amount of space anyway. So it all, and then we of course released it and saved some money. But the point is that we need equally high quality people at our end. In your case, of course, uh, you have been able to. I have been a, we have been a big beneficiary of it. See, we think of us like a digital bank. We think like that, okay? The quality of people we hire, the way we hack our processes, the way we think of the UI UX layer, the way we think of the uh, journeys, talent we acquire from the organizations, uh, the stack. We try to think of like a digital bank and build everything digitally. Okay, yeah, I mean, I can see even when Reserve Bank thought of the CBDC, they picked your bag right in the beginning because uh, they, they could see that you were digitally prepared. Now, I want you to give us some idea of where banking itself and IDFC Bank is headed in terms of digital transformation. Uh, where do you think is the next big leap? See, I'll tell you where the big leap is. For, just, just understand the tech a little bit so you'll understand better. See, in the tech stack, typically you'll find the applications, you'll find middleware, you'll find a lot of the engagement layers, you'll find the channels, etc. That's tr traditional, it always exists. What IDFC has done really special, and that makes it different, that, you know, very useful, is that we built a really fantastic data platform. Data platform different than data lake, right? So it's, it's level up, right? Don't think of, don't think of data uh, mart, don't think of data lake, now think of data platform, okay? And in the platform, now all systems are not talking to the platform, feeding supply, supply to the platform, bit of a hybrid. And that platform, then we have ML capabilities, which takes, that works on the data on the platform. For example, on the platform in many legacy institutions, you'll find Lata Venkatesh, you'll find L Venkatesh, you'll find L, you'll find different names. They can't even figure out who you are, right? So, so with the stack being very powerful, then you have this, then you have ML capability, then you have AI capability, and then you feed the engagement layer through this personalization, the experience dramatically goes up, dramatically. And there's a huge difference between traditional banking and digital banking just by the power of the stack. Okay. Let your uh, imagination run wild. What do you think is the next big thing uh, that is about to hit banking? And my personal example always is Digi Yatra. I mean, UPI was a great moment for all of us. Digi Yatra, suddenly we are all just walking because they've already done the KYC at home. You see something like that? So we are working on many of them at the point of time because like I said, we 
we just enjoy being on the cutting edge of technology. Okay, like it's just a joy by itself, and of course, it also helps us do great business and all that. The uh, big two three things are coming up. One is that the generative AI is a very powerful thing. Okay, and uh, we have uh, at this point of time actually building capabilities to consume from whether it's open AI or Llama or Anthropic, wherever we can consume it. Our ability to use it, in, for example, let me give easy to understand an example, okay, which you'll really get it in 10 seconds. Now, running call center. So in the call center, you are, um, suppose you made a 100,000 calls. Now, normally, uh, somebody's sample would call the, our quality manager would pick up sample of 2-3% of the calls and see how the employees are talking. That's all you can do the human being. Now you can take 80% of these calls, 80,000 or 100,000 calls, feed it all to a JNAI model, and it can tell you that in these many cases, your employees raised the voice, your employee was abusive, or the customer was abusive. Oh. So instead of sampling 2% sample, 80%. So it just changes the game. So this is the kind of power that's coming up. But to your question about what looking ahead. What is the next best big thing? It's the next big thing. The next big thing, two big things are coming up. One is conversational AI. So conversational AI, which means that today your contact center, you are calling some human being, human being is picking up. Imagine for a minute, it's not a human being. Okay, it's a bot. Okay, it's a bot. But that bot to be successful, it needs an orchestration layer. It needs a, a intelligence layer. It needs a workflow. It needs an integration. That bot has to be sophisticated. Then the bot can communicate with the customer. So it's a big thing coming up because of course, very exciting. But, uh, you know, service standards can go up dramatically. Credit costs can come down through these models. The uh, cost can come down. So this is our way because our cost to income ratio is 72%, right? It was 92. So how can 92 come to 42, uh, 72 in the first place? Technology has made it happen. And technology is the only bullet which will take us forward in the future as well. This is really fascinating. And does your cybersecurity uh, protect you from all this you feel confident it will not give away some data. No, cybersecurity is the most important of all of these. Okay, most important, like we discuss so many technologies, but all got to need a protective cover. Uh, drawing from so many places and reaching out to so many millions, So you feel safe. So we uh, you know, never feel very safe. Okay, this is a very tense world. So, but, uh, but at the same time, what you invest into it. The next bigger is fraud. So again, fraud will need some coverage. Um, cyber security will need some coverage and they will need some real attention. Okay. You know, a, a legendary city banker once said that I am no longer a bank. I am a technology company with a banking license. I think you exemplify it far more than any other banker I have met. We love it. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vaidyarath.